Hi, and welcome to the Business Career College video series. This is a video that's really designed for capstone course students, for those that might be working towards their CFP designation. But if you're uh, sort of interested in using Excel in a retirement planning application, then you could uh, get some benefit out of this as well. I probably will end up building a continuing education course around this video or around a series of videos like this. So if you're here for continuing education credits as well, uh, welcome. Um, first off, the Excel spreadsheet. If you actually want a copy of the Excel spreadsheet, I'll give you my email address. Um, I'll just throw it in the formula bar for now and I'll throw it up again at the end of the session. If you're a capstone student, you'll find it in your capstone list of resources, but otherwise fire me a note at jason at businesscareercollege.com. Um, depending how you're attending the course, it, if you're attending it through a Moodle course with Business Career College, I'll make sure that it's part of the resources that are available there. Okay, this is a very, uh, I don't wanna say simple necessarily, but uh, to the point, how about that Excel spreadsheet uh, what I wanted to do here, I had some questions from students and good questions. I thought uh, maybe worth putting a little bit of extra work in on this. Um, so what I did in order to build out a table that would roughly uh, replicate a RIF or a LIF uh, withdrawal requirement, assuming it's an invested RIF or LIF, not an annuity, because of course if it's an annuity, then your RIF minimum is just based on your annuity benefit. But assuming it's invested in mutual funds, seg funds, stocks and bonds, whatever you have, then this table, this uh, this set of, uh, of uh, Excel sheets will, I believe, accomplish most things that you'd want to accomplish with a RIF or LIF. So what I've done here, I built out two tables. Let's go over the values real quick here. So, or two uh, sheets, sorry, I've got RIF, sheet and data sheet for those that have seen me work with excel you know this is how i like to do things my data sheet is where i like to list all my starting data and what this allows me to do is it allows me to manipulate this information um, i'll show you this in a few minutes but instead of having to go back and rework the whole sheet every time i change something i can actually just change the information in the data sheet and i'm in good shape Okay, so the sheet itself that's actually doing the work here, doing the heavy lifting, uh, we have our age. So I always do the same thing. I always like to start off with age. Uh, you could start off with a year across the top. Um, could be useful for an actual retirement planning scenario. I'm not that fussy about that. Go ahead and insert year across the top and you would use the same formula as you would use for age. Account balance, how much is in the account to start us off. And I've really done this where we have a RSP or a Lira balance. I haven't taken into account any further investments. This is really just designed to show the withdrawal portion. If you wanted to take into account further investments, um, then you would do an accumulation style sheet. You could do it all on one sheet. I just wanted to focus on withdrawals here. But if you had additional investments still coming in, you could build in a couple more rows here to take care of that. Uh, optional withdrawals, I treated this as if there might be somebody who needs to take out money on a regular basis through the year. I assumed that any optional withdrawals would come out on a monthly basis, and that becomes important when we do the investment gains here, because really what I did with investment gains is I took the entire uh, amount that was invested at the beginning of the year, and then I reduced that by any gains that would have been made on the withdrawn amount, but I only took half of that into account. So basically just to average out the effect of withdrawal, where I said, look, if you take out, as you hear, see here at age 66, if you take out $5,000, I'm assuming it's a monthly withdrawal over the course of the year, or it's one of these, maybe it comes out in a wash type of things. You're not going to get a return on that $5,000. So I have adjusted that, but I only took off half the return. So really, in this year at age 66, this person is gonna get a return on $284,420, less half of 5,000, so $273,000, whatever that is, $272,000, sorry, is what's actually generating return there. And then our uh, mandatory withdrawals, this is the tricky part, and this is what I really set out to do. I'm gonna 
put a little bit of work into showing how I arrived at the mandatory withdrawal. So what I did is uh, built a little table here that shows the RIF minimums. I copied and pasted the uh, RIF minimums down below here. You'll see this. This is RIF minimum starting at age, I don't know why I started at age 65, but starting, I could have started at 71. The first time when it's not the formula. Before 71, it's the formula, 90 minus age, or sorry, RIF amount divided by 90 minus age, but uh, starting at 71. It actually is a formula, but it's a pretty complicated formula. It's easier just to, at least for me, to manually type these in. You're welcome to copy and take that right off of this sheet if you just want the RIF minimums for your own sheet, go ahead. But uh, what I did here is I built out a RIF minimum calculation. So at each age, this is the RIF minimum at age 58, if you had a RIF, the minimum you would take out is 3.13%. And this is where I did an if formula. This is actually a pretty complicated formula. I hope capstone students aren't actually doing this kind of thing, but it's useful. So I said, look, if the age is less than 71, I know it's the formula. And that's where we just took the one divided by 90 minus the age in question. So in this case, it would just do one divided by 90 minus 58 or one divided by 32. And that's the 3.13% you'll see here. And then at this age, it's one divided by 90 minus 59. So that's the 3.23% you'll see there. But what I want to do then is when it gets a little bit uh, stickier is after age 71. So let's say here we are at age 73. I'm, I know now I'm into the RIF minimum years. And this is where I used a horizontal lookup function. Um, I actually had to learn horizontal lookup to do this. I, always excited to find a new application of Excel that I can learn from doing a video like this. So I'd never used horizontal lookup before. It's, I wouldn't want to say it's easy, but um, I think now that I have the hang of it, I could use it again. So what you're going to do with horizontal lookup here, and you'll note this is part of an if formula. So this is the logical test. Uh, if younger than 71, we're using this. If 71 or older, we're using this, the horizontal lookup. So the horizontal lookup says, okay, we're going to compare this to value Q1 to the current age. That's the sort of trigger for this. So it, this first thing is just the value that you're comparing it to. The second part of this, the array, that's the information that you're pulling from. And you'll see it's all highlighted in pink down below here. It's everything from column B way at the left side to column AZ way over at the right side. And it's rows 10 and 11. So it's going into that set of information, that horizontally arrayed set of information is laid out left to right. You do VLOOKUP if the information was laid out up and down. It says, I'm gonna find you then where 73 is. So it says, hey, I'll find you 73 on that chart of yours, on that little array of information. And I'll pull the second, that's what this two means, in the second row of information, I will pull the relevant data. If there were three rows and I want the third chunk of information, I would put a three in there. If I had one in there, then it would just return 73. That wouldn't be terribly helpful, but uh, it's going to pull whatever's in the second row where age 73 is from this array of information. So a little bit uh, finicky, you have to get it just so, but once you have it like so, it does work out nicely. And you'll see then that the 5.53% is the right number that's in there and all the values are correct all the way across. So I was actually pretty happy with that horizontal lookup thing. You don't have to learn it, you can just copy mine. Um, not that difficult to function though, once you kind of get the hang of it. Now, that sort of shows the, the key that I was trying to demonstrate here. A uh, few things that I'll demonstrate other than that. This is how I like to do my Excel. I like one sheet for every kind of key bit of information. So this is just a RIF sheet or an RSP sheet, whatever you want to call it. And working our way down then, what I've done, I've got the account balance. Now, first year, that's just the amount you'd start off with whatever it is. Let's say it's $180,000. Just start off with that amount and Excel will push that all the way through. And then next year I say, all right, I want that amount to be based on what it was last year. And we're gonna add in 
any new investment gains. So that's the 8,100. And we're going to take off any withdrawals and we're gonna take, take off any mandatory withdrawals. So those two amounts both have to come off. And then the other thing I did is I put a max around it. This is something that people don't always think about, but it's actually quite helpful where say a maximum of zero and what that does, it prevents it from going negative. So if you have a year when you make a big RIF withdrawal, at least this will stop it from going negative. I could actually have put a negative or a max around the option withdrawals as well. So that would never be more than the account balance. It's fine. It's uh, it depends how um, sort of aggressive you want to be with it, but at least this way my account balance can't go negative. We'll never have a negative RSP or a negative RIF. Okay, so that formula just runs all the way across and it's the same thing year after year after year. Um, oh, I will point out in the age formula, the one thing I did here is I did something similar here. I don't want this to ever go below, or sorry, I don't want this to carry on forever and ever. I actually set this compared to my data. So you'll see it's uh, normally gonna be just B1 plus one, but then I said also, it's gonna be the smallest of B1 plus one, so it's gonna keep growing by one, but it also, when it gets to mortality, so that data, and it's an absolute reference here with the dollar signs around it, that's gonna refer back to my mortality age, which I set at 102 here, but we could set at anything. So you scroll out here and you'll see what happens then is when this person gets to age 102, basically just freezes here and, there are other ways you could have handled this. I could have adjusted this to zero, but I thought at least that way it's obvious the sort of mortality age. And I could delete the last two rows here. I don't know that it helps anything. This really tells me what there is in the account in that year. Probably good enough for um, any sort of Excel projections we're doing. Okay. So that's sort of min and max functions at work. And then our optional withdrawals. So this is where I said, look, if you have a requirement to take some amount out to meet a lump sum need or for monthly income purposes, I wanted that to be able to be represented here. So this would be an amount you would enter in manually, or it might be an amount you pull from some needs analysis on some other sheet. However you get to this, this is an amount that's gonna come out that's not your scheduled RIF minimum, okay? And what I wanted to make sure of here is that for instance, and you see this here at age 80, where we took out more than the RIF minimum, the RIF minimum is gonna be about $17,000 here. At age 80, we've got a $30,000 withdrawal. I wanted to make sure that that didn't um, negatively affect or didn't push our mental withdrawal into a negative number. And again, I used a max function here to make sure that doesn't happen. So that max function again comes into play because sometimes you might take out more out of your RIF than your RIF minimum. And I didn't want that sort of uh, badly represented. Okay. And then the investment gains. Uh, so this is pretty straightforward. Really what I did here is I took the amount of that starts in the RIF, so that's just B2 here, times the investment return that's on the data sheet, I'll show you that momentarily. And then, like I said before, I took out half of the investment return that would have been generated on any optional withdrawal, that optional withdrawal happening throughout the year, means that you're not getting it, you're not getting that amount fully invested. And I just copied that formula all the way across, and the biggest thing with a formula like this is you have to make sure you put in your absolute references. So I'm always referring to data B5, even when I get out here, it's still data B5 that I'm referring to. It's a common error to forget to do absolute references there. And you can see data B5 is just an investment return. I manually inputted it. Um, in some other videos, I do show how to do a fancier version of that where you base it on inflation or base it on adjustments or whatever. And if I change that investment return, it's gonna change everything with my RIF. I'm getting less return now than I was. And uh, my mandatory withdrawals, this is the thing that I've already pointed out here where I say, all right, first off, 
I don't want this ever to be a negative number. The way I did that is I did a max zero uh, sort of wrap around the rest of the formula. I really wrote the whole if formula first and then added that max zero wrapper around it. So the if formula here says, all right, if the cell uh, B1 and B1 is the age here. If it's greater than or equal to what's in my data B3, that's the RIF amount, then we're going to make a RIF withdrawal. If it's smaller, then there's no RIF withdrawal. There's no mandatory RIF withdrawal. So the value if true is simply the amount that's in the RIF, that's the January 1st balance, Although you're taking this withdrawal out, I'm assuming because it's just the mandatory withdrawal, you're taking it on December 31st. So you'll take the mandatory or the balance times that RIF minimum that I showed you earlier that I pulled from HLOOKUP or from the formula, and then minus any withdrawals you've already taken. So you don't want to be taking extra amounts out necessarily. If you already took a little withdrawal out, no problem. That'll take, that'll reduce your RIF minimum requirement. So that's the, the whole thing really. And you can see, you can manipulate pretty much any information that's in here. If I do a really young starting age, then I'm gonna have to copy cells way further across. So let's not worry about that. Let's say that our starting age is uh, 66 now, and maybe we drop mortality down to 97, and we decide to riff at age, let's wait right till 71. That would be the age as of January 1st. I did put a little comment here for that. So wait as late as you can to riff. And now it comes back. We're starting from that older age and your RSP or at that point RSP is growing. We're gonna start making withdrawals. There they are at 71, start making your mandatory minimum withdrawals. If you take some money out, let's say this person decides to take out $10,000 over here, that takes care of most of the riff minimum requirement little withdrawal required, or if they go well over their RIF minimum, hey, no minimum withdrawal at all that year. And you can sort of run the whole RIF out that way. And I set mortality to age 97, so everything sort of freezes at 97, but you can see here that at 97 then, there's still $35,000 left in the RIF, making a little bit of investment return, mandatory withdrawal still coming out, at the then 20% rate. I hope that that's helpful. Um, like I said, the Excel sheet is available for anybody who wants it. I will give you my email address one more time. There you have it. And uh, yeah, feel free to fire me an email if you're looking for that. But if you're a, a business career college student, well, then uh, you'll have that available as part of your normal resources. Perfect, thanks very much and uh, enjoy your continued studies.